All right. So in our last lecture, we uh, sort of developed um, these relationships for the thickness of our boundary layer here, the uh, shear stress at any point on our plate, um, at any point x on our plate measured from the front of the plate. We developed a shear uh, a skin friction coefficient, which is a non-dimensional parameter, which uh, is a function of our Reynolds number, as a uh, Reynolds number, which is calculated at any x, which again is measured from the front of the plate. Our characteristic length in this plate case is our length along the plate. And then we have our, our drag coefficient, which is uh, our non-dimensional parameter, which we're used to the, the formula, but we have a, uh, an, uh, an actually an analytical relationship for it now. It's 1.328 divided by Reynolds number of the entire length of the plate. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a car. And let's assume we put a magnet on the very front of the car. This is an old car, but it's very boxy. <laughs> so it's not curved at all. And um, we want to know what the, uh, if the magnet slides off at a speed of 7.5 meters per second, what is the magnetic force holding the magnet on? The magnet is three by five centimeters and short length is parallel to the flow. So if we were to redraw this, it would look something like this where we have a, we're gonna approximate this car as a flat plate which is funny. I don't know if you ever talk here about how physicists always approximate everything as a sphere, even a cow. Well, we've done one better. We've approximated a car as a flat plate. And we have a magnet. I'm drawing it kind of large. Um, located five centimeters from the front of the car. And the magnet itself is three centimeters. Oh, so you, again, all our lengths are off. 0 0.03 meters deep and five centimeters into the page. So we want to know what the force is due to friction on just the magnet. Okay. Great. So we have a flat plate essentially, and um, we have ways of calculating the drag force on sections of a flat plate through our drag coefficient. So Let's do that. But the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that our models are appropriate for what we're using them for. Our models are only for laminar flow, so we have to check that. So let's check our Reynolds number at the front of our plate and at the back of our plate. So the Reynolds number as a function of x at the front of our plate is going to be equal to rho u x over mu, which is equal to 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed which is the density of air times the speed of our car, 1.75 meters per second times 0 0.05 meters divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth kilogram per meter second. And this ends up being equal to 2.8 times 10 to the fourth. Um, yeah, and it's unitless, right? Reynolds number is always unitless, which is laminar, great. Do the same thing for uh, the back side of the plate, the farthest from the edge. So this is going to be equal to 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 7.5 meters per second times 0 0.08 meters divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms per meter second. And that's equal to 4.5 times 10 to the fourth. Great, so they're both laminar. So we can use the models we have right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the, again, we've greatly exaggerated the height of our magnet, but we're gonna find the drag force for this entire section of our flag, flat plate. And then we're gonna subtract off the drag force. So we're gonna call this all. And then we're gonna subtract off the, um, what I'm gonna call the pre. F pre, the drag force for the front right before the magnet. Um, and we have to do it that way because the only tool we have is the ability to calculate the drag force on an entire flat plate. So we can break it up though and pretend that we have two flat plates, one this short, five centimeters short, and one eight centimeters short, and basically find the difference between them. Okay, so let's do that. 
So our CD or drag coefficient all is going to be equal to 1.328 divided by the Reynolds number square rooted for the for the both the magnet and the front of the car that is before the magnet. So this is equal to 1.328 divided by, and luckily we've already calculated our Reynolds numbers, so we can just plug those in, 4.5 times 10 to the fourth, and that's our Reynolds number for our X2, and that's because it's the whole plate, right? Or the magnet and the stuff in front of it. And that ends up being equal to 6.26 times 10 to the negative third. And we can find the drag coefficient pre, which is equal to the front, which is 1.328 divided by two, square root of 2.8 times 10 to the fourth, which is equal to 7.94 times 10 to the negative third. Cool, so our F all, force all, is gonna be equal to our drag coefficient times 1 half rho u squared times a, which is equal to 6.32 times 10 to the negative third times 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 7.5 meters per second squared times 0 0.05 times meters times 0 0.08 meters. And remember, this is the area of our plate. Cool, so when we calculate this, we get F all is equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons, which is not very much, right? Um, perhaps unsurprisingly, laminar shear stress is not that high. <laughs> but let's do the F pre now. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I wrote that down wrong. Um, this is actually equal to 8.45 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons. Um, if we calculate, plug in everything we need to plug in for our F pre, this is equal to uh, all the same stuff, right? Except for our area changes. So um, we have is equal to our different drag coefficient. So 7.94 times 10 to the negative three times 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 7.5 meters per second squared times our area now has changed. Our area is 0 0.05 meters times 0 0.05 meters. It's a square area in front of our magnet. So that ends up being equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons. Great. And the difference between these two is equal to um, F is parallel to the flow is then equal to um, 4.63 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. And so we could actually figure out now what the force on the magnet is if we knew the coefficient of friction. And we're going to guess it. And we're going to guess that our coefficient of friction is 0 0.3, which tells us that our force of our magnet is 1.5 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons, um, which is fantastically small. Right? Fantastically small. But um, it's hard finding examples where laminar flow shear stress actually matters. So uh, let's do a quick quiz, not quiz, um, and then we'll move on to uh, turbulent flow. So you're running for public office and you want to attach a banner to your car antenna. Is it better to orient it short ways or long ways with the flow? Um, and when I say, is it better to orient it short ways or long ways with the flow, I mean from an engineering perspective, right? So the question we have for us ourselves is what's going to cause the most force on our car antenna? Because otherwise we might bend our car antenna which you guys don't know about, but that used to be a, a thing you used to worry about. So the dimensions of our flag are 25 centimeters by five centimeters, and our car speed is eight meters per second. So we need to check right off the bat, always, is the flow laminar over our whole 
banner. So uh, Reynolds number length for, we're gonna call this long, is going to be equal to uh, 1.2 uh, kilograms per meter cubed times our speed, which is eight meters per second, times our length, which is 25 centimeters, so 0 0.0, nope, sorry, 0 0.25 meters, divided by our viscosity, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms per meter second. And that ends up being equal to 1.5 times 10 to the fifth, so laminar, which we would hope because that's the only tools we have are to analyze laminar flow. Um, so just for the record, this if we were to draw a car, again, this is a long time ago, this is like the worst car ever. <laughs> Little tiny wheels, then it has an antenna. And we put a banner on it. Either put the banner like this, or we put the banner like this. Okay. So long ways is laminar. So clearly the short ways is going to be, we should still need to calculate it because we're going to need our Reynolds number later. So short ways is equal to 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times eight, eight meters per second times 0 0.05 meters divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms per meter cubed, oh, meter second, sorry. And that's gonna be equal to three times 10 to the fourth. So also it is laminar. Great. So what is the drag coefficient? Well, CD is equal to, um, we gotta get our equation again, because I'd forgotten it, 1.38, 1.328 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. 1.328 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number, L. So if we calculate that, plugging in our short and our long, we get a long CD is equal to 0 0.034. And our short CD is equal to 0 0.0. 0 I forgot a zero up here, my bad, sorry, 0 0.0034. Our short CD is equal to 0 0.0766. All right, now we need to calculate what the force is for each orientation. So F is equal to 0 0.00368 Newtons, which is equal to, if we wanna write out the formula, as always, it's equal to the drag coefficient C, D, times one half rho u squared times our area. Um, and you'll note that the only thing that changes between the short and the long is our drag coefficient. Our area stays the same. It is always 25 centimeters by, well, 0 0.25 meters times 0 0.05 meters. So that's always our area, to, no matter what the orientation is, but what changes is the drag coefficient. So um, F long, sorry, F short is 0 0.00368, whereas F long is equal to 0 0.00165 Newtons. So which has the less force? Well, it turns out it's the long, sorry, the long banner. So orienting our banner, here's our car antenna, putting our banner like this has less force, less drag force on our car. And the reason is, right, is um, more of our uh, more of our banner is in the low shear stress region. Remember, shear stress is high near the very start of a flat plate. Because our, if we draw our boundary layer near the start of our flat plate, near the very start of our flat plate, our 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 velocity gradient is very high, very high. So our shear stress is very high. So if we're drawing our shear stress, our shear stress goes something like this, right? And it goes, re re reduces with the square root of X. So um, if we have a longer plate, we put more of our plate in this region here where we have low shear stress. And if we make it flat, or if we put the short side parallel to the flow, we put all of our plate in this, this region up here where we have high shear stress. 
So we end up having more shear stress and more, um, more force on our plate. Cool. So uh, an interesting question to answer for yourself is the printed letters on our, our, our banner are raised up 300 microns from the surface. How does this compare to the thinnest section of the boundary layer and the thickest? Will this affect the nature of the flow, laminar versus turbulent? So I want you guys to solve this on your own. Maybe we can talk about this in class uh, one day. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what your delta is at the beginning. So x is equal to um, approximately 0. You'll note that is in undefined at the beginning. Um, you have to find out delta at the beginning and then delta at x is equal to 5 for the short region, or delta is equal to x, delta at x is equal to 25 for the long region, right? And um, figure out what this is compared to the height of the, the letters. And then think about how flow behaves when something is. Um, Uh, disrupting it, right? Will it stay laminar? Will it stay nice and beautiful and clean? Or will it become more chaotic and more turbulent? 